Okay, so we are moving into chapter 10. Those of you that did lab on Monday, you already know that we're entering into mitosis. And so uh, mitosis is a subject that whenever you take biology, even if you take life science for the first time in junior high, you will typically go through mitosis. And so it's something that you should have at least seen before a couple of times. Uh, but if not, that's okay. We're going to walk through the stages of mitosis, talk about the big events that have to happen and the big events that can make them go wrong and lead to a cell not going through uh, this process. All right. So first question, what are the stages of the cell cycle and how do chromosomes factor in? What are the stages of the cell cycle and how do chromosomes factor in? All right. So here's a diagram of the cell cycle, and uh, there's no mistake that the, the M phase, or mitosis, is the smallest piece of this pie. The only mistake is how large of a piece it, it, it represents on this diagram, and that's because you had to fit in a lot of information. But according to this diagram, you'd be looking at, what, about 15, 15 10 to 15% of the cycle is represented by this piece of the pie, it's nowhere near 10 to 15% of the amount of time that a cell is in that cycle, okay? It's, it's much less than that. And for most cells in our body, they're, ju they're, they're just hanging out here and they'll never go to the next stages. They're, they're, they're here. And so, um, you know, these are only in parts of our body, either early in development when cells are dividing like crazy because you're growing like crazy, uh, or in parts of your body where you, where you need to regenerate a lot of new cells because you're losing them. So at the base of your skin to replace the cells that are lost as they move outward and eventually are sloughed off, um, which is kind of cool to think about that you walk around and live in an environment where 90% of the dust you inhale is, are skin cells from other people. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, that's so cool. I, I never thought about it that way, and now that I do, I love it. I love it. But like, so there you've got actively mitotic cells in your liver because your liver cells die very rapidly because they are, they are metabolizing toxins. Um, you, you've got very actively mitotic cells in your bone marrow, regenerating blood cells that are lost, white and red blood cells. Okay, but other than that, you don't have a lot of actively mitotic uh, tissues. And so most of the cells in your body are just are here and they're gonna be there until they, until they don't exist anymore. All right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so collectively, everything besides M phase is known as interphase, and it consists of GAP1, S phase, where the, where the DNA is duplicated, and G2. Now, S phase does take a long time. It takes a long time. We have a lot of DNA. You have two copies of a 3 billion base pair genome. It takes a long time to replicate that. So here's another way of looking at it, just demonstrating to you what's going on with the chromosomes. Those of you that have already had lab, you've seen this during interface, you can't see individual chromosomes. And here it's showing you individual chromosomes just for, so that you know they're there, but they're not condensed enough for you to see them with light microscopy. You could see them with electron microscopy, but not with light microscopy. But once you get into M phase, your chromosomes are visible. And if you get a really good cell, which some of you were able to do in lab, you can actually see this textbook X shape uh, to those chromosomes. Okay? And then so depending on the uh, position of those chromosomes gives you an idea of what specific stage of M phase you're in. Okay? And we'll go through all of these stages in more detail uh, in a little bit. And so what's nice is you can go through here, you can look at a cell or a slide that's a prepared tissue of actively mitotic tissue. For instance, uh, the root from a plant, which is what we looked at in lab, or a, the blastula, which is an early embryonic stage of some animal, okay, where basically the whole thing is actively mitotic. And you can find cells in all of these various stages at all these various points. But it's not easy because cells are tiny, the nuclei are even tinier, the chromosomes are even tinier than the nuclei. So it's not easy, but it's doable. Not easy, but it's doable. Okay. What are the stages of the, lot of the cell cycle and how do chromosomes factor in? Oh, still same question. Same question. So there are three main events. Three main events. 
interface. Interface, which that's collectively everything outside of M phase, everything that happens outside the time of M phase. And this is divided into three. G1, and this is where like the cell is behaving like a normal cell. Again, keeping in mind that most of the cells in your body are in G1 and will never go to a different stage. This is the normal stage. This is where they're growing. They're behaving like normal cells. If it's a liver cell, they're metabolizing toxins, pulling them out of the blood as it flows through the liver. If they're neurons, they're taking electrical signals and sending out other electrical signals. If it's a red blood cell, they're, they're, they're taking oxygen and they're carrying it somewhere else, taking a little bit of carbon dioxide, carrying it somewhere else. Then we have S phase. S phase is when the DNA and all of the chromosomal proteins associated with the DNA are duplicated. <coughs> Once a cell does S phase, it's committed to finish the cycle. And this is why most of the cells in your body are in G1 and they will never leave it. And so because of that, we give it a special name. G1, when it's, when it's, it, it's, 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 it's there for life, we call it G naught to say they, that they've left the cell cycle. G naught. Okay. But anyways, once a cell goes through S phase and duplicates its DNA, it's got way too much DNA. Instead of having two entire copies of the three billion base pair genome, now it has four entire copies and it's way too much. So once the cell does that, it's committed. It's committed to finish the cycle. So it tells us that cells will only go through S phase if they're going to finish the cycle. They're going to then go through G2, uh, where the cell grows a little bit, and it basically is it's a preparation phase for mitosis. Any proteins that need to work during mitosis are transcribed and translated during G2. Anything that the cell needs to do to prepare for that needs to be done during G2. Okay, But again, we know once we enter G2, we're, the, the cell's already committed, right? It did S phase. It's already committed to finishing the process. And so G2 is a preparation for M, for mitosis. And then we have mitosis. And we're like, okay, well, what is mitosis for then? What mitosis does is take your four copies of the DNA now that you have after S phase, right? We had two, but we duplicated it. And two times two is what? Is four. And so now we have four copies of the DNA. Mitosis is going to take those four copies and split them evenly between two nuclei. So each nucleus has two copies, okay? So before M phase, you have one nucleus with four copies. After M phase, you have two nuclei with two copies each, okay? That's what M phase does. And you're like, cool. Now, instead of one nucleus, I have two nuclei, which means that you're prepared to do what? Take one cell and to make two cells, okay? And that's the third uh, stage, if you will, or the third big event in the cell cycle. It's called cytokinesis. So mitosis is not the duplication of cells. Mitosis is the duplication of nuclei. Okay? Mitosis plus cytokinesis is the duplication of cells. But without cytokinesis, mitosis will not get you two cells from one. Mitosis will get you one cell with two nuclei. You're like, does that ever happen? Yeah, in some tissues that does happen. In some tissues you get multinucleated cells, but it's, it's not the norm. It's not the norm. And, and actually most of your multinucleated cells, they aren't produced that way anyways. Most cells that are multinucleated, like skeletal muscle cells, are multinucleated, uh, but those are several cells that fuse together to form a single cell. Okay? Any questions about this, the cell cycle, what the phases are, stages? Yeah, Mia. Wait, but you can, like, leave G0, though, right? You can, yes. And you can induce a cell to leave G0, just most cells in your body won't. Most cells in your body won't. Most cells in your body, uh, by number, don't last very long, have a short shelf life. And then they just need to be replaced. They don't, they don't go through mitosis and restore themselves. They have to be replaced. So, yeah, you, use, you lose cells by the probably hundreds of million every day. Now, you don't miss them because they're being replaced, 
But if they're not being replaced, you do miss them. And that's what starts to happen late in life where your skin isn't replacing cells as quickly as it's losing it. So your skin kind of loses some of that elasticity and the ability to repair itself. But anyways, that's a long way off for you all, not so long a way off for me. So you guys can pray for me. I used to play the game. I used to play a game with my students where I'd have them guess how old I was. But then I started to get actually pretty close to the age that they were guessing, and now it's not fun anymore. <laughs> so it was fun when people were like, oh, you're probably 35, and I was only 25. Like, that was fun. But, you know, it's not fun anymore. So, all right. Sorry. I don't, I don't know why I shared that with you, but it came to my mind. And I'm like my seven-year-old daughter. If I think it, I have to say it. So, all right. Important questions. Why is regulation of the cell cycle so important? Why is regulation of the cell cycle so important? I want to show you a picture. And so here's a picture. And in blue, you have the chromosomes. In red, you have microfilaments. In green, you have microtubules. And, and what you can see in this image is that you've got two cytoskeletal elements that are involved in the process of controlling the location and the behavior of these chromosomes. It's a very, very important thing to control. The cell invests an enormous amount of time and resources into ensuring that S phase and M phase are done correctly. Okay, the cell invests an enormous amount of time and resources into ensuring that S phase and M phase are done correctly, that the DNA is duplicated correctly without error, and that the four sets of chromosomes are split correctly into two sets in two separate nuclei. So that the result, are the result of mitosis and cytokinesis together is two genetically identical cells. Okay. So why is this so important? Well, in order for the cells to grow and reproduce, in order for the organism to grow and reproduce, cells have to reproduce. So if you're going to grow, uh, like let's say from age 3 to age 20, that growth is predominantly cellular growth, okay? Cell duplication. Not the growth of individual cells, but cells duplicating uh, to produce more cells. If you're going to reproduce, that is done by producing more cells, producing gametes. And then on top of that, in multicellular organisms, we have to develop different subpopulations of cells, right? If you're going to be a multicellular organism and you're going to have the division of labor characteristic of multicellular organisms, you need different tissue types. And you need those different tissue types to do different tasks. And if you're going to do that, you need to develop these what we call subpopulations of cells. The subpopulation of cells that's going to develop into this tissue, you know, maybe muscle tissue. And another subpopulation of cells that's going to develop into nervous tissue. And another subpopulation of cells that's going to develop into epithelial tissue. And another subpopulation of cells that's going to develop into connective tissue. Okay? And then within each of those subpopulations, you need sub-subpopulations of cells. Okay? And so we need to build up an enormous number of cells to carry out the developmental process. Okay? And then keeping in mind that mitosis and cytokinesis combine to form two genetically identical daughter cells uh, after the DNA is replicated, we have to ensure that this process is done correctly. Otherwise, you become what's called a mosaic, in which you have genetically distinct cell lines in your body. Like a dog with one brown eye and one blue eye. And so what happened is, at some point, the mitosis was not done correctly, or the DNA duplication was not done correctly. And so one uh, eye basically gets no pigment, and the other eye gets pigment uh, deposited. And then keeping in mind that DNA exists as a chromosome, that we need to ensure that these chromosomes are divided during M phase. 
So our DNA, before it's duplicated, exists as a chromosome, DNA and its associated proteins. We duplicate that, and then we need to ensure that those chromosomes are separated correctly during emphase. That's what you need to be anticipating and thinking about and searching for as we go through emphase. Where are the chromosomes? Where are they going? Okay, that's the whole focus of emphase. Where are the chromosomes? Where are they going? Okay, this we've already mentioned. Now, most organisms are diploid. And what that means is they maintain two entire copies of the genome, two full sets, two versions of each chromosome. And so this is something we need to be able to maintain. So for you, the average cell in your body has two copies of chromosome one. One that came from mom, one that came from dad. Two copies of chromosome two. One that came from mom, one that came from dad, so on and so forth, all the way up through chromosome 22. And then if you're male, you've got a Y chromosome that came from dad and an X chromosome that came from mom. If you're female, you've got two X chromosomes, one that came from mom and one that came from dad. That's something we need to preserve and maintain during this process. So it's not just a matter about having the DNA, okay? Not having, but having. How, I can, I don't even, know how to make the distinction, cutting it in half, okay? And so it's, it's not just a matter of cutting the amount in half, it's <laughs> ensuring that every nucleus gets two copies of chromosome one. Every nucleus, or each nucleus, because there are only two, gets two copies of chromosome two, so on and so forth, down the line. And so after S phase, each individual chromosome is actually two sister chromatids that are identical to each other. So when the DNA is duplicated, after which they are physically attached together, the two copies. And so during M phase, you should anticipate seeing those two sister chromatids being split apart, being split apart. All right? Questions, thoughts, concerns? Anything you feel like you need to share at this point? It's really warm in this room. I feel like it's making me tired, which means it's probably making you tired. And then on top of my voice, which is very soothing, you know, I get it. It's, my kids fall asleep when I'm talking to them all the time. Actually, I wish that were the case. My kids don't sleep. But anyways, that's not for you. That's for me. That's my, that's my burden to bear. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to work with those around you, and I want you to go through, and I want you to write down the five major stages of mitosis and the big events that happen in each phase, okay? So we've got five major stages of mitosis and write down just the, the key event, just one key event that has to happen in each of those five stages, okay? Take a couple of minutes. I'm gonna grab some water, starting now. Basically just so can I literally wrote down every definite book I wanted to get a this part like a so I like with the and 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 and
say I'm the most easy part of the humans. I'm not a pet. I'm not a as is usually the case, as is usually the case, when you need to understand something in science, you basically have two options. You can memorize it and never understand it. Or you can understand it and never have to memorize it. Okay? And it's, and it's better to do the latter, where you understand what's going on and you can reason through anything you may have forgotten. And so as you're going through this, I would suggest, rather than just memorizing the stages and what the key events are, is to remember the big picture of what M phase needs to accomplish. And what does M phase need to accomplish? It needs to duplicate the nuclei into two genetically identical nuclei. And we know that at this point, when M phase starts, every chromosome is composed of two identical sister chromatids attached together. So we know at some point during M phase, we need to separate those two chromosomes from one another, okay? The only way this can be done efficiently, because we know DNA in its normal state is all stretched out and is just everywhere. We need to localize all of this genetic material, <coughs> okay? So we know at some point we need to condense our material down, and we know at some point we need to split those two sister chromatids. And then it's just a matter of reasoning through what the order of those steps is. Okay, so the first step we have is prophase. In prophase, I mean, three big events happen, and all three of these uh, basically have to happen. One, we have to get rid of the nucleus, because if we're going to access these chromosomes with our cytoskeletal elements, we need to get rid of the nucleus. There aren't cytoskeletal elements inside of the nucleus, right? Our microtubules are forming these scaffolding that the anchor the organelles in place. They're forming roadways that vesicles are working on. So we need to get rid of the nucleus. That happens during prophase. We also need to rearrange our cytoskeleton because now the microtubules that had been anchoring organelles in place, okay, some of those need to start to work to separating these chromosomes. And so that happens during prophase as well. And then the third big thing is your chromosomes condense. And this is where they become visible. You can actually see them under microscopy as individual chromosomes. And so when you stain the chromosome, it doesn't just look like one big purple nucleus. It looks like individual bands inside of a more colorless nucleus. So that's prophase. Three big steps, but things that have to happen for us to carry out the process of separating our genetic material. The next one, prometaphase. And so in pro-metaphase, we, we basically, it literally means first metaphase. And so in here, our cytoskeleton has made contact with our chromosomes, and we're moving them. We're moving them essentially to where they'll be during the next phase. So our, our microtubules, our cytoskeletal elements, they've made contact during prometaphase. So during prophase, we're rearranging, reorganizing our cytoskeleton. During prometaphase, that cytoskeleton is now starting to do its new job, new job of organizing the chromosomes. And so here's what that looks like on an individual chromosomal level. We've got uh, these microtubules, and we call them kinetochore microtubules because they attach to the kinetochore, <coughs> bless you, which is a complex on the chromosome where the two sister chromatids are attached together. Okay, so we've got the kinetochore, the microtubules attached to those are called the kinetochore microtubules. And notice we have a microtubule from one pole attached to one of those two chromatids and a microtubule from the other pole attached to the other one of the two sister chromatids. And that has to happen. That has to happen to ensure that these sister chromatids are pulled apart. And so we have a checkpoint in this cell that we'll talk about later in this chapter that ensures that both kinetochores are attached to a microtubule and that the microtubules that they are attached to are coming from opposite poles. Okay, what phase is next? 
Metaphase, we just had a phase called first metaphase. Here's second metaphase, or true metaphase. Those kinetochrome microtubules are still attached, but now what's happened? We've lined them up. And in mitosis, we've lined them up single file. So in your cells, there are 46 chromosomes. And during mitosis, they are lined up single file, 46 chromosomes long in the middle of the cell. And again, this is to ensure that when you split the genetic material apart, what you are splitting apart are the two sister chromatids. So that each <coughs> nucleus gets uh, the copy of chromosome one that came from dad, and also the copy of chromosome one that came from mom. Each nucleus gets both, so that you preserve that proper combination that formed to make you, to make you, you, and to keep you, you. All right? What's next? Anaphase. In anaphase, this is where we start to see our plan of splitting the genetic material in half coming to fruition during anaphase. These kinetochore microtubules shorten, and as they do, they pull the two uh, chromatids apart. At the same time, the proteins holding the two chromatids together are dissolved, and so the two chromatids are pulled apart to opposite poles. So if this is chromosome one here from dad, both poles get that copy of chromosome one from dad. Remember, initially they were attached together, genetically identical. And if this is chromosome one from mom, both poles get chromosome one from mom. Both poles get chromosome one, two from dad. Both poles get chromosome two from mom. So on and so forth, all the way down the line. All the way down the line. That is 46 chromosomes long. Levi. So this, this picture that we have of what, uh, chromosomes, that's like this, like your X chromosome, Yep. Are those actually like the post yeah, that's a good question. Um, sort of. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much all chromosomes, when they're post-duplication, look like X chrom. They look like X's. Um, and so the the Y post-duplication sort of looks like a Y, um, but not really. It still looks like an X a lot of the time. So that's more of just a distinction to note the difference because the X chromosome is very different from the Y chromosome. There are two portions on those two chromosomes that are a match so that they can still associate together uh, properly during the next phase we'll, or the next event we'll talk about next week. Um, but the rest of them are, are very, very different. The Y chromosome is the least gene-dense chromosome in the human genome. It has the fewest number of, cro of genes of, of any chromosome. It's also the smallest but it only has about one gene for every one million bases. There's about one gene for every one million bases on the Y chromosome. Because really the only thing that the Y chromosome needs to do is to uh, sh shift the cell into producing a certain two cell types, one that's gonna produce, um, one that's gonna produce sperm and one that's going to produce high levels of testosterone. That's what the Y chromosome needs to induce. Okay. Everything else is done by one of the other chromosomes. Okay. All right. So then we'll just go ahead and, and, and write these out really quickly. Notice one phase that we didn't mention yet is telophase, and that's because telophase and cytokinesis happen simultaneously. So we'll save that one for a moment. You're like, but Dr. Engel, that's the last phase of mitosis. You're right, but it also coincides with another thing altogether. So be patient. We'll get there. So during prophase, chromosomes condense, nucleus and nucleolus disappear, and the mitotic spindle begins to form. That is the reorganization of our microtubules, the reorganization of, reorganization of our cytoskeleton. Sorry, I'm having a good time. Usually Wednesdays, Y'all are, you know, a little bit more smiley, a little bit less tired looking, but y'all are looking pretty worn out. And I don't know why, but that, that just, it makes me smile a little bit. Because that means I know you feel like I feel, and then I don't feel so alone, you know? I feel like we're in this together. It's a hard time. This is a hard time of the year. 
especially if you if you took class this fall semester and this semester it's like it's, it's a hard time i get it i understand why you're tired all right during prometaphase the kinetic core uh, forms on the sister chromatids and those microtubules make contact with our chromosomes at the kinetic core at that complex that forms on our chromosome okay during metaphase those microtubules move them around well that should say both not noth i guess the n and the br right next to each other both kinetic core and non kinetic core microtubules function the non kinetic core function to make the cell longer instead of spherical it becomes more um what's the term ellipsoid is that what i'm looking for or elliptical elliptical that sounds weird like a bicycle but is that right uh, we'll say ellipsoid elliptoid yeah the ellipse the elliptical yeah i don't i don't know how this all works english it's my only language but i'm still learning it oblong oval Anyways, the non-kinetic core microtubules are, are functioning to elongate the cell. The kinetic core microtubules are moving them around, adjusting them until they get right in the middle. And really, the middle is wherever you'd say the middle is, because it's actually wonderful. We'll see this. Uh, a lot of times, you get an uneven distribution of cytoplasm when the cells go through mitosis and cytokinesis. And so the middle is wherever you tell, tell it the middle is. So the middle could actually not be the geometric middle. But anyways, that's another conversation for later. I just, I want you to know that and so you, you, you can anticipate that. During anaphase, uh, the spindle separates your two chromatids from each other and ensures that each pole gets one of the chromatids. Each pole gets one of the chromatids. Any questions on these four stages? And so we've basically, we've accomplished the task that M phase needs to accomplish. We've halved the DNA, right? The only thing we haven't done is got two separate cells and we haven't rebuilt the nuclei. Because at this point, the nuclei are still dissolved, okay? So the last question for this set, the last question for this set, how does mitosis relate to cell division, and why is cell division important? How does mitosis relate to cell division, and why is cell division important? Now, at this point, we've already discussed mitosis is not cell division. A, a product of mitosis is not two genetically identical cells. The product of mitosis along with cytokinesis is two genetically identical cells. And so here you can see telophase happening concurrently with cytokinesis. During telophase, notice what's happening. We are rebuilding our nucleus. You see that? We are rebuilding our nucleus during telophase. The chromosomes are decondensing, going back to their pre-mitosis state, and our mitotic spindle is dissolving. We're rebuilding our pre-mitotic cytoskeleton, okay? We're basically reversing everything that happened during prophase, okay? Except for now, instead of one nucleus, you have two. And if cytokinesis happens alongside telophase, like it is here, you have two nuclei in two separate cells, okay? If you were asked this question, if you were asked this question, what cytoskeletal element plays a pivotal role in M phase? How would you answer? Microtubules, right? The microtubules play a pivotal role in M phase, ensuring that the goal of M phase is accomplished. That is, you take your DNA and you split it into two separate nuclei. Now, if you were asked what cytoskeletal element plays a role in cytokinesis or plays a pivotal role in cytokinesis? How would you answer it? You're like, I don't know yet. We haven't talked about cytokinesis. It's not microtubules. I showed you an image a few slides ago and it had blue and red and green, but it, if you're red, green, colorblind, it, it just had blue and then some other color, I'm sorry. So, but we had, we had the cytoskeletal elements that would both be colored the same or that one is green and one is red and i told you one of them was microtubules 
which work to ensure that our chromosomes are separated properly. And then the other cytoskeletal mount was what? Or what? Microfilaments. And the, the role microfilaments play is, is they play a role in ensuring cytokinesis happens. They play a role in establishing where the middle of the cell is. So microfilaments will start to aggregate in the middle of the cell. And again, the middle of the cell may not be in the ge geometric middle, but the middle of the cell is wherever those microfilaments start to aggregate. And while telophase is happening and cytokinesis starts to happen, these microfilaments do what microfilaments do best. Where else do we find microfilaments in the body? And muscle cells. And you've got a motor protein called myosin that walks two actin filaments in opposite directions. To do what? To shorten the fiber and to contract your muscle. So what do microfilaments do well? They contract and shorten structures. And so that's what happens right here. It's called the cleavage furrow. And what will happen is those motor proteins will start to walk all of these microfilaments in opposite directions, pinching this cell into two cells. Say, so have you ever been chewing gum and somebody asked you for some of it? If that's never happened to you, wait until you have children. It'll happen to you all the time. But I'm not going to give them my entire thing of gum because they would choke on it. And my wife thinks it's gross that I would give them pieces of my gun gum anyway. Should I just give them a new piece? I was like, no, they asked for part of mine. I'm going to fulfill <laughs> what they requested. But you take, you, the best way to do it is you take your gum, you blow a bubble, and then you bite the bubble in half. And it basically pinches it into two bubbles. Right? And that's kind of what's happening here. You take a cell... You, 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 you pinch it right in the middle, and eventually it pinches into two separate cells. And it's all accomplished by those microfilaments. You've never shared gum with anyone? Okay. It's kind of gross, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> to share gum with their father? That's okay. As long as they don't think it's completely normal to share gum with everyone. That would be abnormal. Maybe I should have a conversation with him. <laughs> That's okay. You know, if people think your kids are freaks, they leave them alone. You know? So, there's that, you know? So here's, um, here's a plant cell. And so plant cells and other cells that have cell walls, they have one added task they have to accomplish. So in addition to splitting the cell in two, they need to build up a wall in between the two, okay? And so that's what you see happening here during, in, in plant cells. So really there's, their cytokinesis begins with building a new stretch of cell wall, and then it doesn't rely as heavily on microfilaments as uh, cytokinesis in animal cells, yeah? So are the spindles part of the micro, or is that just like another? That's the microtubules, yeah. The microtubules, yeah, the spindle. Okay. Did you see it in the previous slide? Yeah, just in telephone. This one? This one. This one. Nope, nope, nope. I don't know where it is. Where did we see it? Oh, the spindle, yeah, in telophase where the spindle dissolves. Yeah, the spindle is this. It's, it's the microtubules. It's the reorganization of the cytoskeleton that gives you the microtubules you need to separate the chromosomes. That's what the spindle is. Okay. So to sum this up, final stage of mitosis, telophase coincides. <laughs> During telophase, this is the slide you were talking about. Emily, is this the slide? Yeah. Oh, we haven't got there yet. Here it is. Yeah, so the spindle uh, disassembles. And so what we're meaning that is the microtubules that have formed to pull the two sister chromatids apart, they disassemble and the microtubules can go back to their pre-M state, their pre-M phase state, where the microtubules are anchoring organelles in place, they're providing scaffolding for vesicles to walk along. So that is, is fixing what happened during prophase or reversing what happened. The nucleus and the nucleolus reappear. The genetic material is now divided into two nuclei. Chromosomes decondense. So during cytokinesis, a furrow in animals, protists without cell walls, fungi without cell walls, uh, a, a cleavage furrow forms where the microfilaments are pinching 
the cell into two. You'll never forget my illustration, right, of a bubble bit right in half. And it's actually nice, you, you use your lips first to just kind of pinch it, and then you use your teeth to finish the job. Works really nicely, it gives you almost a perfect half. That way if two of my kids want some of my gum at the same time, I just split it into two and I give them both some. And then I get a new piece that has all the flavor, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, and cell division, this is the primary way in which a multicellular organism grows, and it's the only way an organism can reproduce. And then, so if an organism reproduces asexually, uh, it does it by mitosis. It does it by mitosis, which is kind of cool for, for organisms that can do that. Like uh, coral uh, sponges, where they'll start to form another individual off their side by mitosis, and then it'll get to a point and it'll it just kind of pinch off. Be a great, it, I mean, it'd just be great if people could reproduce that way. Although it would take a lot of time, because it takes a lot of time to build a human. Have we, have we talked about this before, that the gestation period of a human is almost identical to the gestation period of a cow? I mean, almost to the hour, exactly the same. But the average cow at birth weighs 100 pounds. The average human at birth weighs 7 pounds. It's like, how does that work? It's because it's, it's hard. It's hard to build a human. It's hard to build a human. What's that? That, I mean, how much do you, cows' metabolic rate is slower than ours, though, so they their theirs would be lower. So yeah, for so. Um, yeah, but have you ever got a cow running? Those things, you look at them and you're like, that thing's gonna be slow, but they are not slow. They are not slow at all. I thought that, and then I lived on a property after I graduated from high school for that month. I worked this property, and I would chase cows for fun, and uh, I was surprised at how fast they were. They are, they are fast and they are observant. You could tell that they've been eaten by many things. And they were designed to be able to escape that. <laughs> so, all right. One more question and then we'll be done for the day. To, done for the day, also done for today. I said done for, I don't even know what I said. All right, how is the spindle formed and how does it change throughout mitosis? How does the spindle form and how does it change throughout mitosis? So here's in prophase. So, by the way, something you should know. Microtubules only grow out of a microtubule organization center. I think we talked about that a little bit earlier in the semester, maybe. So, microtubules only grow out of a microtubule organization center, of which the centrosome is one. So, the centrosome is one of these microtubule organization centers. That was weird grammatically. I don't know if it was correct or not. Whatever. Again, it's English. It's my only language. I'm still learning. You know? um, so here's our micro microtubule organization center, and it's starting to, again, it's reorganizing our cytoskeleton. So during prophase, uh, we duplicate. Well, the, actually, the duplication of the centrosome happens before prophase. So by the time you get to prophase, you've already got uh, two of them. And you can see these microtubules are growing out of these, growing out of these centrosomes. And so here, now we're in prophase. This nuclear envelope is starting to deteriorate, right, which is a characteristic of prophase. And these centrosomes are migrating to opposite poles, and these microtubules are growing out of these. Some of these are going to be kinetochore microtubules, which do what? attached to the chromosome at the kinetochore. Some of these are going to be non-kinetochore microtubules, which do what? Function to elongate the cell, right? Remember that discussion we had of whether it's elliptical or elliptoid or ellipsoid? I don't even know. I don't know how you turn that into an adjective. So here's an electron micrograph uh, showing these spindles. Here's the centrosome here, and here are the microtubules growing out of it. And here are the chromosomes that have been contacted and are in the process of being lined up. Being lined up. So finishing this question, uh, microtubules we know uh, work along with motor proteins. And so the microtubules from the cytoskeleton and their motor proteins are recycled and are used to build the mitotic spindle. So the microtubules that are anchoring organelles in place 
the microtubules that are functioning with motor proteins to allow vesicles to walk along them in the endomembrane system, those microtubules are recycled along with their motor proteins. In preparation, basically microtubules fill the bulk of the cell. So they stop anchoring organelles in place and they take up all that space pushing the organelles to the outside of the cell. Okay? Rather than anchoring them into place. Now in most eukaryotes, these will only radiate out forming star-like structures that we call asters from a microtubule organization center. That's what this stands for. And the centrosomes are a microtubule organization center. Plants don't have centrosomes, but they do still have microtubule organization centers. And so they accomplish the same function with a different cause. And during metaphase, and what's going on during metaphase? What's that? They're lined up, single file, 46 chromosomes long. There, by that point, there are thousands of microtubules attaching to the kinetochore. Some of those forming non-kinetochore microtubules, elongating the cell. There are literally thousands of microtubules at that point working on ensuring that the two poles end up as far apart as possible. You stretch the cell out as far as you can without it ripping apart and that the chromosomes are lined up and are in their proper position with a microtubule from one pole on one side and a microtubule from the other pole on the other. Okay. That makes sense? A little bit? Cool. Like it could make a lot more sense if I wasn't so tired and it wasn't so warm in here and I didn't just already sit through one or several classes today plus chapel. My mind hurts a little bit. Anyways, think on it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Those of you that have lab tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.